instructor. That means that we are proper gun dog instructors, we get asked that quite a lot. However, we specialise in working with gun dog breeds that live in the house as pets. So all of the dogs that you can see walking around here are current students in my classes. Um, starting over here, we've got Jace with Pip. Pip is a working dog of Spaniel. She is also a working dog on a local shoot. So as well as attending the classes, she has a job to do as well. Next in line, we have Abby with Barley. Barley is a Labrador Retriever. Abby's been coming to classes with Barley since she was about six months old. And Abby is looking to start competing her hopefully later this year. Next we have Jo and Zuma. Jo rehomed Zuma when she was about two years old from a home that had done no training with her whatsoever. Jo has brought her on to such a level that she worked all last winter on Jo's local shoot. And she's also one of the regulars in our lessons. Just because a dog goes out shooting doesn't necessarily mean it's very well trained, as I'm sure all these guys will, uh, their facial expression <laughs> will help you understand that. And then finally, we have Dan here in the orange hat with Peggy. Um, Peggy, yes. Um, so Peggy is a young dog. Dan is hoping to take her out to compete in some trials this summer. She unfortunately had to have a tooth taken out a couple of, couple of weeks ago as a result of somebody who, Dan will not mention who, his wife, throwing a stone into a stream which the dog tried to catch. So please don't throw stones for your dog. I think Peggy's a really good example of why you shouldn't do that. But she's back out, she's back up to training now, and she also worked last winter on a number of different shoots with Dan. So as you can see, these are working dogs as well as pet dogs. They all live in the house with us. They're all very loved. I should have introduced my own dog, Skye, as you can tell from her little grey face. She is more of a veteran nowadays, but she still likes coming out and showing what she can do as well. The Pet Gun Dog books, I would really recommend if you've not heard of them, go and have a look. They were written about 12 years ago by a lady called Les Graham, who really found a niche in the market for um, gun dog breeds that just needed to be able to work according to their own natural instincts. So she found that Labrador, Spaniels, the different HPR breeds, sometimes quite a little bit bored just doing the, the basic obedience and adding in the retrieval work, the hunting work, and all of the things that they're bred for can just help them to become a little bit more engage with their owners and build that bond and have a better, more balanced dog. We're also running right down the very far end of the event, the Have a Go Scurry and Steeplechase. So please do come over and see us after our demo and you can have a go yourselves with your dogs. So if I can get you guys to just line up please down that end Dan, so if you shuffle down to the end. As you can see, one of the very most important parts of gun dog training and all dog training is to have a dog that walks nicely on the lead. So you can see the dogs all walking nicely along there, just as they were warming up. So they're all going to pop their dogs next to them. And our dogs need to learn that the position that they remain in is a nice steady position by our side. As you can see, they're all quite happy to be there. A couple of them are needing just a little bit of nudging back into position. All of our handling is force free. It's all very positive. We do tell the dogs if they need to know that they're not in the right place, we will gently correct them back but we will never use any force in doing so. So if we pop them all up beside us, and then just all walking forward in a nice straight line. So you can see the handlers are trying to keep the dogs nice and closely beside them. And then a left about turn and sit. And our dogs learn that as soon as we stop walking, they need to pop straight into a sit. And this allows us in the gun dog training to start to build on more steadiness and more control, and also introduce the whistle work that we'll talk about in a minute. So if you guys walk forward again, back down to the fence, pop your dog in the sit by your side again, and then just pop the leads off. So we start off teaching our dogs to walk by our side, and that should be regardless whether there's a lead there or not. So the dogs are all now off lead. So the same again, please everyone, just walking forward. Keep those dogs engaged on you. Keep them nice and focused by your side. And you can see the heel position remains the same. And halt and sit. With a nice snappy sit. Forward and left about turn and sit again. Lovely, and then back into your line. 
I should have mentioned that this demo for us was a last minute thing. We were only asked to do this demo four days ago, so I think they're all doing a great job so far. No pressure whatsoever, guys, right? We're all happy. Okay, Joe, if you can leave Zuma in a wait. Just go down to the other side. And then just whistling her in front. And Abby, if you can leave her in a stay. Walk down to the other side and then come back to her. We teach the dogs two different commands there. So you can see Joe asked Zuma to wait and then followed up with a recall. Abby told Barley to stay and then return to her side. So by using different commands for different things that we want the dogs to do, it can help to create a better level of steadiness in our dogs. You can see that Barley really anticipated that she was going to be asked to do the same thing Zuma did. So as Abby got to the other side, Abby just had to reinforce, no, nope, you're not doing the same thing, you're doing something different and came back to her side. Okay, Joseph, you leave her in a wait and then call her in front. Well, I'll just remind everybody that there is no such thing as a tea fairy. <laughs> and Dan, if you can leave her in a stay, walk around Jace, around me and Abby and back to Peggy. Once our dogs have got used to being left in the stay, it's important to start to add extra distractions to just test that stay. So Dan is using movement, he's weaving in and around other dogs, which often is quite a distraction for a dog. But as soon as they see their handler go near someone else's dog or someone else, they might think that that looks really fun and they might try and join in. But you can see there that Peggy knows her job is to stay until Dan comes back. Lovely, well done. Okay, Abby and Dan, if you can believe both of your dogs in a wait, please. Go to the other side. and call them together. So again, there's another test of steadiness that your dog will come back to you when they see another dog running beside them. And also you can see that um, Barley went slightly ahead of Peggy, but Peggy still remains steady. So it's really important that our dogs learn these steadiness exercises and they learn the difference between stay and wait when we're teaching them basic training and in preparation for gun dog training. And really all gun dog training is, is obedience and tricks. So if you like obedience and you like tricks and you've got a gun dog breed, then gun dog training is not outside the realms of what your dog and you could really enjoy. Okay, this time, if you guys can all leave your dogs in the stay, Jason, you can just shuffle back into the line with her. And this time we're going to add the retrieving object as a distraction. So Joe, if you can just walk out, leave her in a stay, go and pop her a dummy out, get about halfway across the ring and then go back to her. And Abby, if you can do the same. So while we're trying to really get some drive for these dogs, we want them to have that drive to go and retrieve an object. We also need to teach them they don't go and retrieve it until we've asked them to. Okay, um, Jason, if you could pop out your dummy as well. So you can see all of the dogs know that that is something that normally they will be asked to go and pick up, but in this occasion we're using it as a steadiness exercise. And Dan, if you can go and pop yours out. So none of those dogs are tied up, none of them are being held, and as you can see, they all know that they have to remain steady in that position while that dummy goes out. Okay, Joe, if you can leave her in a stay, you can weave up and down through the dummies and back to her. So we're just lengthening that stay a little bit more, just building on the steadiness a little bit more. Adding the distraction of Joe now going back around the item that normally Zuma would go and retrieve. And you can see she's interested, you can see her little nose going. She really wants to know when it's going to be her turn to go and fetch that object, but it's not, not her time yet. Okay, Abby, if you can bring her to heel and weave her in and out of the dummies off lead. So we can also use the retrieving objects 
as a distraction to just sharpen up our walking by our side. So again, you can see that the anticipation is building with Barley. She knows she's going close to them. She wants to fetch them. Abby's keeping her nice and close. She's just gently asking her to leave it as she goes around those objects. And back around Abby and then back down to where you started. Okay, Jay, so if you can leave her and stay and just come and pick your object back up. So sometimes our dogs need to learn that they're not always going to get that object. So sometimes we'll send them for a retrieve and sometimes we'll just go and pick it up and we'll use that purely as a steadiness exercise. And Dan, if you can send Peggy for her dummy. So Dan, line her up. Peggy loves a retrieve. She's not been allowed to do as much recently because of her tooth. Lovely, well done. Okay, Joe, if you can send Zuma for her. So, getting our dogs to go out on a straight line is really important. Well done, Zuma. That dummy had been down for quite a while, but Jo still encouraged her to have that motivation to want to go and fetch that item. And Abby, you can send Barley for hers now. Lovely, well done. So you can see with the Labradors, at the point that Peggy was sent out, there was three dummies on the field, but she knew what country was going for. But Dan keeping her on that lovely straight line. Okay, Joseph, if you could just do a throne retrieve for Pip, please. Okay. We'll let Pip have a little retrieve as well. Don't bring it to me, though. Spaniels, as I'm sure those of you that are holding a spaniel at the side of the ring, know that spaniels can be a little bit more scattered brain than their Labrador cousins. But well done, Pip. She must have got into a nice smell there, Jay, so decided she'd just take the advantage to just have a little bit of a meat. Okay, lovely. So, these are just straightforward, simple retrieves, just thrown retrieves. So we're just going to show you the variations that you can put on those. So, Jess just showed you a retrieve where we just throw the item out and we send our dog. So, if you could just walk out with her and do a memory retrieve, so just walk out and put down the right hand on the So, we can also put on our field work, our leave it, our steadiness, and our retrieve. All of these dogs have competed at crafts this year or qualified for crafts. So, Wing Club. Well, it's about the yeah. It's all about being really, really yeah, yeah. good and showing really good examples of each breed. So, by Walter, who is a 12-month business puppy, followed by Misha, who is a Samoyed, who is then followed by Maya, who is another one of our business crew, followed by Arlo, and no, he's not a doodle, he is a Spanish water dog. Then we have Matty, who is a cattle dog. So as you can see, we've got different dogs across the different breed groups. Following Matty, we have Norman, who is a Sharpe. And bringing up the rear, we have Frankie, who is a Dandemont. And as you can see, we have a mix of table dogs and non-table dogs. Table dogs are the smaller dogs which you would show on the table for the judge to go over. Okay? So, the way that showing works is usually you have a steward and the judge in the ring. The steward is the position that I'm doing. I organise what's going on in the background. The judge will be asking for dogs to come up. What you saw initially was all the dogs running around the outside of the ring, and that gives the judge a quick 
a chance to have a look at the whole group and the whole class. Ralph is now being sat in front of the judge Lynn. What this enables the judge to do is have a look at Ralph and decide how well he fits the breed standard. Showing is not about comparing dogs to different dogs in the ring. It's all about comparing each individual dog against the breed standard. And what we're looking for is all dogs have their faults, so which dog has the least faults? Okay? She's now asked Ralph to do a triangle so she can look at his movement and then what she's going to ask is she's going to ask him to do an up and down. This enables the judge to have a look at the back face of the dog and also how straight the dog is running as he's coming back towards her. She can then have a good look at his expression and she's going to send him round to the back. Whilst one dog is doing his final loop, the next dog will be getting ready and getting prepared to stack. Different dogs stack in different ways. So with our business, we hold the tail out. That's not true of all groups. Okay? When we're competing, the judge is having a good look at the teeth, having a good look at the eyes, going over the dog and looking at the different structure of the dog. So guys, the dog remember, the subscribe to Jamaican Brammy. Really I'm at a dog show. Nice Bark. The big Bark. So remember She's now, subscribe to my channel. Let's go. So as you can see, the business and dog group, so they will compete against other gun dogs. As we've got breeds that are across the different breed groups, this is more representative of the further end of shows. So initially, in a show, we would do the breed class. In the breed class, dogs would compete against dogs, bitches would compete against bitches, and then the best dog and the best bitch will go forward to compete against each other. Once the best of breed is decide, decided, that dog, bitch, will go on to that dog or bitch will go on to compete against other dogs in the breed group. As you can see, Misha has been having a little bit of a wobble. That's because some dog bit him earlier. We give him a go. So he's also a little bit nervous of the tunnel. So Misha is doing really, really well. <laughs> and Misha... So Misha is a 21 month old Samoya. He started ring craft at 9 months old. He was a um, best puppy dog at his first show, which qualified him for props. This breed is known to be independent, social and vocal. Vocal. They're also known as the Smiling Sally. Okay? And they were bred to pull sled sleds in Siberia. Well done, Misha. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what ring class is all about. It's all about building confidence in our dogs because the most confident dogs show the best. It's not about forcing them around the ring. It's all about them what that it is, and then they retrieve it once it has been shot. Okay, thank you, Mela. Next up, we have Arlo. Arlo is a Spanish water dog. So as you can see, Arlo's dad is choosing a slightly different technique to stack his dog. He's choosing to kneel. You can choose to stand up or kneel. Either is completely acceptable. With more nervous dogs, you can just choose the way that makes them feel best supported. Okay. What the judge is doing now is the judge is telling Arlo what she wants him to do. Generally speaking, dogs will be asked to either go round and then they might be asked to do an up and down. Other things that dogs can be asked to do is a triangle or they might be asked to do a reverse triangle, but that's a lot less common. Okay? So. Arlo is 19 months old. He's fairly new to showing, but he's getting his stud book number already, and the stud book number is an individual number for dogs that they can gain through showing, and he also has an RCC. Now an RCC is a reserve, um, 
Bill has fed the dog. So Loki, for example, has been fed by Starbon. His name is Starbon All Eyes at Me at Valtinia. So Lynn's kennel name is Valtinia, and what that means is that when she goes on to feed for Loki, all the puppies will be known that you have come from Starbon, but to be currently at the Valtinia kennel. Now we have Norman. Norman is a 12-month-old Sharpe. He's been showing for six months. He's gone to the Sharpe Club. He's been reserved best puppy in show. So he's doing really, really well. And he's also gained in puppy group two and four. Sharpe's were originally bred as watchdogs, the property guardians. And they were also used for hunting in China. What you may notice about Norman is he's a little bit less wrinkly than some of the pictures of Sharpe's. This is because for health benefits, Sharpe's are being fed to a new standard now. So we're looking for slightly less wrinkles across the back and the face so that they're healthier dogs. And Norman is a beautiful specimen of the new standard in Sharpe's. Okay? And as you can see, his dad's doing up and down. He's then going to go straight into the go round. And our judge is just having a look at the movement, looking at how freely he moves and looking at how well he meets that sharp AP standard. Okay? Next up we have Frankie. <laughs> and Frankie again, she's only fairly new to showing. So she's again building her confidence up. She's sometimes a little bit unconfident with going onto the table, which isn't a problem. So it's about the judge working with our showing handlers to enable that dog to feel comfortable in the room. And because they're like humans, they don't always perform on the day. <laughs> For our handlers who have very kindly volunteered their time this morning, this is a perfect opportunity for them to practice in a real show environment without that pressure of actually competing. So it means that if they want to take the time to train, they can. And as you can see, Franklin's got a bean moving. No, she's doing lovely, okay? So she's enjoying her day. And she's a dandy diamond terrier. Okay, so now the judge has seen all the dogs individually. And what she's going to do now is she's going to walk up and down the line and have a look at each dog again and decide which dogs are the ones that she thinks most represent their breed standard. As it's quite a big class, what she might do is she might select a short list and she might pull out three to four dogs to then run around again. When she selects those three to four dogs, when they run around again, she's going to make her choice from that short list. So, she's going to short list. Where are we shortlisted? So we shortlisted Ralph, we shortlisted Walter, we shortlisted Arlo, and we shortlisted uh, Matty and Norman. At this point, the judge will dismiss the remaining dogs from the ring. Okay? <laughs> now she's got her shortlist, what she might do is she might ask all the dogs in one go to walk up and down so she can have a look at how they walk compared to each other. Okay? And from that, she can have a look at the whole group all walking together and have a look at the back of each dog. You can see she's walking around, having a look, asking them to walk up and down. The main goal of showing is to get to Crufts. However, Crufts is just another championship show. So you can make your dog up to a champion without ever having competed at clubs. This can quite often be used as a method for dogs that like dog breed cannot be used, cannot be shown at clubs because it's a paying event, but they're still a good specimen of their breed. Okay, so I want you guys all to be watching because you guys are going to be making a decision about which dog you think is best. So, Having a good look at these dogs walking up and down. Remember, this is the cattle dog. We've just had the Sharpay. One of the things we do during wing craft classes is we practice duration stats. So our dog should be able to stand in this position 
for up to about three minutes, if not up to five minutes at a time. So they can really be comfortable showing themselves and standing well. Okay, that's our Spanish water dog going back up and down. Then we have our first whistler. He's going to go up and down. Yay! Queenie, the frog, six years old. 
Yay! Yeah, oh yes.